Hello everyone, this is Venli, and today something truly incredible has happened in the Leopoldi Angel Tank, and I want to talk to you guys about it. It's not babies, it's not even eggs, it has nothing to do with the angels. They're all very healthy, they're doing well. It's, it's this. Can you, can you see that? Let's get a little closer. That's way better. This might look a little funky. And let me tell you a story. And then we'll explain exactly what this is. Doing water changes, working in the fish room. We noticed, me and my roommate, there's this growth on the side of the tank. It took me a second to realize what it was. At first we were worried it might be some kind of weird fungus or some other sign of poor water conditions. The tank's a little overgrown. Come back to me for a sec. You can see just like this Ludwigia has gone crazy. It's, it's nuts. Then I remembered something. A friend of mine, Alex from Secret History, as you guys know, he's a club member with the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society. I see him every meeting. He had seen something similar, and I'd seen pictures. A little light bulb went off. This is a freshwater sponge. Okay, why does that matter? So first off, it's naturally occurring. Freshwater sponges, what is really neat about them is that they're not one living organism. And they are an animal. Let's keep this, they're not a, they're not a plant. They're kind of like, um, like how a clam is a, a filter feeder, but it's a live animal. That's what these are. They're filter feeders, but they're lots of tiny, tiny microorganisms working in concert, in harmony, together. And they filter all these tiny, tiny particulates out of the water. Now what's really cool is that the reason they show up is that the water is very clean. So to get this teeny, tiny speck right here, you have to have incredibly clean water to start with. How do we do this? Plants. Lots of plants and a decent filter. The funny part is that the filter on this thing, you can kind of see it just barely on the back of the tank here, is an old Magnum Hot. So it's a hang on the side or hang on the back canister filter. And canister in loose terms. Really, it's a hang on the back that's just designed a little weird. But really, this is all the plants. Now there is a mulm layer that's in the, the gravel down here, but not a lot. It's not a heavy mulm layer. So kind of in the vein of Lucas Pretz, just let Mother Nature do its thing. That's what's kind of happened in this tank. So why, why is this cool? Why does this matter? Can you do it? Let's go over that. In the United States, there's over 30 different um, species of freshwater sponge, right? So which species is this? Maybe it's this guy. No, it's not that guy. But... Maybe we should name our little sponge collective of sponges more accurately. Bob. SpongeBob? SpongeBob. So, they need really clean water, but they're a filter feeder. They feed on tiny, tiny particles, right? But for them to really start growing and propagating, the water has to be a very just healthy system. Typically, they're found most commonly in fast-flowing water. So, this... Normally, I've, I've turned it off, but usually I have an air stone over in this corner that's just pumping away like crazy. But it looks a little funky when I'm trying to shoot that on camera. So for right now, it's been moved and it's off. So let's, let me step out. Let me let you guys look at the tank a little bit more. Why? You know, this is nothing special. It's just a collection of plants, a little bit of angelfish. Um, it's, it's pretty simple overall. And yet somehow we got this little guy. It does naturally occur in my tap water, so if you're doing RO, you're not going to see these guys. If you're doing heavily filtered water, maybe you run through like a carbon block and a sediment filter, you're probably not going to ever see this. Also, they tend to be more common in certain regions. The northwest, the west coast, the east coast more likely, or if you're really near a river system. So if your base water that your city gives you 
comes from a river system as opposed to a well, you've actually got a good chance to get these if your tank is in really, really good health. And sometimes you'll never get one. Sometimes you just get lucky. I got lucky with this little guy. Now, eventually, it's going to grow out. And it's going to start looking kind of like stony coral. Um, they, they, you know, it looks like this little flat pancake thing now where it's just teeny, teeny, tiny, thin. But eventually, it's going to grow out. And it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I really hope that I can kind of document this process because these are extremely rare. And yet, two YouTubers now in the Seattle area both have them. <laughs> Hopefully, Alex's are still doing well. But my goal is to kind of watch this and let you guys get a feel for what's necessary to keep it going, keep it alive, what they look like as they grow, and how to spot them early on so you don't scrape them off. Now, as this should be obvious, I don't clean the front of this glass very often. However, this glass was just cleaned a week ago? About a week ago. Because that's Corey and Jimmy were over here filming all of my fish tanks in the two main rooms. So, despite cleaning the glass, this is still right there. And now yeah, you see little bits of algae. Let's go back to that close photo again. You'll see little, little spots of dust algae and stuff like that. But it has this really cool, neat look. So that's the key. Look at the, the, the structure. See that big, weird, kind of like almost mushroomy structure? That's a telltale sign that you have a sponge rather than a fungus or something else. So, I hope you guys uh, are kind of interested in this. I know it's kind of a short video, but I really just wanted to show you guys this. It's really neat. It's very uncommon to happen. Um, I got really lucky. I just happened to let you know nature do its thing, and I got something that we normally don't see in the hobby unless we go... And we purposely buy them and set up a river system tank, which I've, there are people who have done that. And it's really neat because these are incredible creatures. And I'm hoping to show you guys as long as I don't mess up, because I might, I might mess up. But as long as I don't mess up, I'm hoping to show you guys the growth of old Bob here. And uh, to grow from just a flat mushroom looking thing to the glorious, beautiful sponge that it has a chance to be. I want to know down below. What do you guys think? Have you ever had a sponge in your aquarium? Does the idea of having sponges in your aquarium, filter feeders like that, maybe like big bamboo shrimp you're used to as filter feeders or uh, freshwater shellfish, is that something that kind of interests you? Would you like to see more on this? Maybe a little more education on it? Let me know. Tell me down in the comments. If you like Bob, how about a little thumbs up? If you don't like Bob, hit that button twice because... You clearly hate Spongebob. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.